My name is Alan Wellenstein. I run our solution design practice at DataArt. It's a well-known secret that 40 to 60% of IT projects fail. It's an astounding figure. IT projects are super risky. All sorts of things can go wrong. Assumptions can be wrong. Um, you might have misunderstood some requirement to stakeholders might not align. The sooner you can start putting real things in front of people to react to, uh, the sooner you can test hypotheses, the sooner you can try things, the sooner you learn whether you're right or wrong, and then you have time to course correct. So when we do a solution design, we rely heavily on user interface proofs of concepts so people can actually see the emerging software and tell us very, very early, yes, that's right, I don't understand this, etc. while it's super quick for us to iterate, correct, adjust. And then we do technical proofs of concepts to test assumptions around okay, we think we can use that legacy system to consume this bit of information. The sooner we test it and verify that it works the way we expect it to work, as fast as we expect it to work with all of the non-functional requirements addressed, et cetera, the sooner we can course correct when we discover that it doesn't work the way we expect. One of the problems that often happens in software is the person who is the champion of the product is seen as the stakeholders, whereas he or she is typically only one interested party in the success of a project. So in the solution design, one of the things that we do is we put together this document we call the solution design framework that very carefully articulates what we call the shape of the project. What are the outcomes we're looking for? What are the priorities within those outcomes we need to be looking at? What is the high level scope, both long term, what this needs to accomplish eventually, but then importantly, short term? What are the constraints that we're building this within? What are the assumptions? And then we make sure that we sit down not just with the person who's paying our bills, the person who's hired us, but with all of the stakeholders who are impacted by this. And what we've discovered is that if we do that at the very, very beginning and carefully take all of the stakeholders through the project, anyone who might be affected, through the process of saying this is what we understand the objectives are, the priorities within those objectives, what we're doing, the constraints, very often we discover that some of those things we didn't get quite right. Our stakeholder didn't get it quite right. And one of the things that torpedoes many projects is those misalignments sometimes aren't discovered until it's far, far, far too late. So in the solution design process, we begin by saying, let's make sure that we all have a shared understanding, all of us, all of the stakeholders involved, and let's verify that very, very carefully. And what happens during those conversations is sometimes people will say, I'm not sure that assumption is right, or are you sure that priority is more important than this one? I don't think, you know, you need to talk to this person, et cetera. And we use that input to then decide the backlog, basically, of assumptions we want to test, prototypes we want to build to demonstrate to people, do you agree, is this right or is this right, proofs of concepts that we use to test certain technical assumptions. Sometimes a, a technical stakeholder will say, oh, I don't know if you can use that API over there. I don't think it'll be fast enough or give you what you want. And by making sure we involve all of the stakeholders at the beginning, learn all of the things that might potentially go bump in the project, and put them in the list to test early, that's one of the ways that we can aggressively focus on mitigating understanding and then mitigating risk.